These are the biggest machines humanity has ever built. Giants of steel and ambition that once promised to change the world. They were built to haul coal, dig tunnels, move rockets, and lift heavy loads into the skies. Some were as tall as 20-story buildings. Some stretched longer than five football fields. And a few weighed more than half a million tons. They cost billions to create. They dwarfed everything around them, and they made ordinary vehicles look like toys in comparison. But today, many of these titans stand silent. Some were scrapped, some abandoned in distant fields or buried by time, and others became burdens too expensive to maintain. They remind us that bigger doesn't always mean better. Welcome back to Lord Gizmo. Today, we'll be counting down the 10 biggest machines humanity has ever built and how they became a waste. Let's start with our number 10, Bertha, the tunnel boring machine that was supposed to change Seattle forever. Built in 2013, Bertha wasn't just big. It was the biggest tunnel boring machine on the planet. At more than 100 meters long and weighing nearly 7,000 tons, this colossal piece of engineering was as tall as a five-story building and as wide as a six-lane highway. Its cutting head alone measured 17.5 meters across, wider than a city bus. Designed to chew through the earth like a mechanical worm, Bertha was meant to dig a massive underground highway to replace Seattle's old viaduct, carving a new artery beneath the city. On paper, it was unstoppable. A steel giant built to grind through soil and rock at a pace no human crew could ever match. But just a few months into its journey, Bertha hit an unexpected steel pipe and ground to a halt. The biggest tunneling machine in the world was now stuck underground, broken and immovable. For two long years, it sat idle, while engineers scrambled to dig down and repair it. Each day meant millions in delays and costs piling up. When Bertha finally crawled back to life, its reputation was already in ruins. It did complete the tunnel, but at a price tag of billions, years late and far over budget. Instead of being remembered as the queen of tunnel boring, it's remembered as a white elephant, an engineering marvel in theory, but in practice, a money-eating disaster. Do you think that was big? Think again. <laughs> because as we move forward, you'll realize Bertha was just a toy compared to what's coming. Next on the list is something that looked like it belonged in a science fiction movie rather than the real world. Number 9. The Soviets called it the KM, but the West gave it a name far more fitting, the Caspian Sea Monster. At 92 meters long and weighing over 500 tons, it was the largest ground effect vehicle ever built, a strange hybrid that wasn't quite a plane and wasn't quite a ship. Its wings were so wide, they could skim just a few meters above the waves, riding on a cushion of air, while carrying missile payloads that could flatten fleets. For the Soviet Union, this was meant to be a weapon of surprise, a secret machine that could outwit radar and strike faster than anything at sea. It looked unbeatable, a monster that combined the speed of an aircraft with the carrying power of a warship. But the Caspian Sea Monster was too big, too heavy, and too impractical to ever become useful. It suffered from constant technical problems. It could only operate in calm waters, and maintaining it drained resources. Then, during testing, it crashed. The largest aircraft of its time was left broken on the shore of the Caspian Sea, abandoned where it fell. Today, its rusting carcass lies half-buried in sand, a reminder of wasted ambition. The Caspian Sea Monster was supposed to revolutionize warfare, but instead, it became one of the most spectacular failures of the Cold War, an engineering marvel that ended up as nothing more than a giant, useless hulk. If the Caspian Sea Monster was strange, the next machine, the number eight, was nothing short of majestic. The Antonov AN-225 Maria, built in Ukraine in 1988, was the largest aircraft ever to take to the skies. At 84 meters long, with a wingspan stretching nearly 90 meters, it was wider than a football field and taller than a six-story building. Fully loaded, it tipped the scales at 640 tons. 
a weight so massive that no other plane in history has come close. Its six giant engines thundered across the sky, and its cavernous cargo bay could swallow locomotives, satellites, or even carry the Soviet space shuttle on its back. It wasn't just a plane. It was a flying declaration of Soviet power. Crowds who witnessed it in flight described it as if they were watching the impossible. Yet behind the awe, the An-225 had a problem that size alone couldn't solve. It was enormously expensive to operate, so costly that airlines and militaries alike struggled to justify using it. Only one was ever finished, and while it flew occasionally, for decades, most of its life was spent grounded, waiting for rare jobs big enough to need it. Then came 2022, when war in Ukraine destroyed the Maria in its hangar. What had once been the dream of Soviet aviation now lies in ruins. The An-225 still holds its record as the largest aircraft ever built, but its legacy is more about wasted potential than achievement, a marvel the world admired but never truly used. The next one, number seven, was called the Great Eastern, and it dwarfed every ship that had come before it. At 211 meters in length and weighing nearly 18,000 tons, it was more than five times larger than its contemporaries. Designed to carry 4,000 passengers from London to Australia without stopping for fuel, it was hailed as the future of global travel. Its iron hull gleamed with ambition, its bulk a statement that Britain ruled not only the seas, but the very concept of engineering scale. In the end, the Great Eastern was dismantled and sold for scrap, remembered not as the ship that changed the world, but as the ship that tried to grow too large too soon. It was proof, more than a century before modern engineering giants failed, that being the biggest does not guarantee being the best. At number six, we have one of the most iconic machines ever built, NASA's Crawler Transporter. Each crawler weighs 2,700 tons, riding on eight tracks, with 57 shoes on each track, and each shoe alone weighs nearly a ton. At 40 meters long and 35 meters wide, the crawlers are basically mobile launch pads designed to carry the mighty Saturn V rocket from the vehicle assembly building to the launch site. They move slower than a person walking, just 1.6 kilometers an hour under load, but what they carry is measured in millions of pounds. At their peak, these steel giants were the backbone of America's journey to the moon, hauling history itself on their backs. But when the Apollo missions ended, their glory days faded. For years, they sat unused, too large and costly to maintain, with nothing left to carry. Later programs briefly brought them back, but newer, smaller launch systems made them nearly obsolete. Today, the crawlers stand mostly silent, relics of an era when humanity built machines not just to work, but to dream big. Our next one is number five, and it takes us back to the coal fields of Ohio. Meet Big Muskie, the largest dragline excavator ever built. This machine was a monster in every sense of the word, standing as tall as a 22-story building and weighing over 13 and a half thousand tons, it dominated the landscape like a moving steel city. Its bucket alone was the size of a 12-car garage, capable of scooping nearly 300 tons of earth in a single bite. Over its 22 years of service, Big Muskie shifted more material than the entire Panama Canal project, carving out hillsides and leaving behind scars that could be seen from the sky. For the coal industry, it was a marvel, a single machine doing the work of thousands of men. But like so many giants, its reign didn't last. When energy markets shifted and environmental concerns rose, Big Muskie quickly became obsolete. It was too expensive to run, too costly to maintain, and too tied to a fuel the world was starting to leave behind. In 1999, this steel titan was dismantled and sold for scrap. All that remains today is its bucket, displayed as a museum piece in a lonely Ohio field, a fossil of industrial ambition, and a reminder that even the mightiest machines can outlive their usefulness. From the hills of Ohio, we move to Germany for our number four. If Big Muskie was built to scoop the earth, this next machine was built to carry it away. It's called the F-60 Overburden Conveyor Bridge, and it holds the title of the longest movable machine on the planet. At 502 meters in length, that's longer than five football fields laid end to end, and weighing over 13 and a half thousand tons, 
It truly looks like the Eiffel Tower has fallen on its side and started to crawl across the landscape. The F-60 was designed for one purpose, to move the layers of soil and rock that sit above coal seams, stripping the land so bucket wheel excavators could reach the fuel beneath. With its endless conveyor belts stretching across the horizon, it could shift mountains of earth with relentless efficiency. Watching it crawl forward on its massive tracks was like watching a steel city in motion. But as coal demand in Germany declined, so too did the need for such a behemoth. Of the five F-60 ever built, four were eventually retired. Only one still stands today, not as a working machine, but as a tourist attraction, a monument to a fading energy era. Once the pride of industrial engineering, the F-60 now survives more as a symbol, a reminder of how quickly even the grandest giants can become obsolete. Our next one is number three, and this is where the word big almost stops making sense. Meet the Bagger 293, the world's largest bucket wheel excavator, and officially recognized by Guinness World Records as the heaviest land vehicle on Earth. It weighs more than 14,000 tons, stands 95 meters tall, and stretches 225 meters in length. To put that into perspective, this single machine weighs more than two Eiffel Towers stacked together. And if you stood at its base, you'd feel like a tiny insect staring up at a moving mountain. The Bagger 293 was designed to strip away unimaginable amounts of earth in open pit coal mines, and it does that job with almost terrifying efficiency. Its massive wheel carries 18 buckets, each capable of scooping up over seven tons of coal in a single bite. Over the course of a day, it can chew through more than 200,000 cubic meters of soil, the kind of workload that would take an army of workers with trucks and diggers weeks to accomplish. But with size comes cost. The Bagger 293 moves at a walking pace, about one kilometer per hour, and relocating it to another site can take weeks or even months. Every road it travels over has to be rebuilt after it passes because the ground simply can't handle its weight. While it still works in German coal fields, it has become more of a burden than a blessing, costing enormous sums to operate and maintain. What was once celebrated as the ultimate mining machine is now remembered just as much for the problems that come with being the biggest. Our number two leaves the land behind and takes us to the sea, where the largest ship ever built once sailed. It was called the Seawise Giant, later renamed the Yara Viking, and its size was so staggering that it almost defied logic. At more than 458 meters long, this tanker was longer than the Empire State Building is tall, and when fully loaded, it weighed over 560,000 tons. Standing next to it at the docks, a human would look like a speck of dust against a floating city. The Seawise Giant was built in 1979 to move crude oil across oceans, and in sheer capacity, nothing else came close. It could carry over 4 million barrels at once, making it the king of tankers. But its massive size, the very thing that made it a record breaker, also turned into its biggest weakness. It was too large to pass through the Suez Canal, too big for the Panama Canal, and too heavy for most ports in the world to handle. For much of its life, it wasn't actually sailing the seas. It was sitting idle, used as floating storage, or waiting for ports that could handle it. Eventually, in 2010, the largest ship humanity ever built was sent to the scrapyard. All that steel, all that engineering, gone. The Seawise Giant proved that sometimes being the biggest doesn't mean being the most useful. It was a vessel that broke records, but not one that truly fit the world it was built for. And now we've reached number one, the biggest of them all. To understand just how massive this final machine is, let's put it into perspective. If you combine the weight of the Bagger 293, the F-60 conveyor bridge, Big Muskie, NASA's crawlers, the Great Eastern, the Antonov AN-225, the Caspian Sea Monster, and Bertha the TBM, all together, they would still be nearly nine times smaller than this single colossus. That's how far ahead it stands from every other giant machine on this list. Imagine a structure longer than four football fields, heavier than the largest aircraft carrier, and built to house an entire industrial plant on water. It wasn't designed to carry people or cargo in the traditional sense. It was built to take natural gas straight out of the ocean, process it, store it, 
and ship it, all without ever touching land. $17 billion went into this single project. Years of design, cutting-edge engineering, and promises that it would revolutionize offshore energy. And what came out of it was the largest floating object humans have ever created. Its name? Prelude FLNG. At 488 meters long and weighing around 600,000 tons, Prelude is more like a steel island than a ship. Standing next to it, you'd feel smaller than a grain of sand at the base of a mountain. Walking from one end to the other could take 15 minutes. That's how vast it is. Prelude FLNG remains the largest machine humanity has ever built. But its true legacy is not power or progress. It is a reminder that even the biggest creation in history can end up as the world's biggest waste. The Seawise Giant and Prelude FLNG showed us that even at sea, building bigger doesn't always mean building better. What they all have in common is that they consumed extraordinary amounts of money, time, and effort, but in the end became burdens rather than solutions. They remain fascinating to look at, impressive to learn about, and unforgettable in their scale. But their legacy is also a warning that human ambition should be measured not only by how big we can build, but by whether those giants can truly serve the world they were made for.